Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be talking about the wonderful Hallmark Channel series, The Way Home. We are joined today by actor and executive producer, Annie McDowell, actor and executive producer, Kyler Lee, and cast members, Sadie LaFlemme Snow and Evan Williams. And Andy, in, in starting with you, it's such an, an incredible exercise as an actor to look at what you've had to do for this role, because obviously you're playing Dell in the present, and then you have a version of her from 1999 going back 20 years. And I was so fascinated in, in the development and how you processed approaching these two different versions of the same character, because for the present day, you obviously have so many foundational backstory elements that the scripts are giving you from 1999. But then for 1999, it's kind of this blank canvas that you're starting with the same way that you would with any other character. And so, ha so how has the process of developing these two very different versions and having a lot of backstory for one, but less for the other, been a really unique approach for you in terms of how you've developed this character? Well, for me, the the real um, crux of what I had to do was the present day Dale. I find her much more interesting because obviously it, it, the back history is told by 1999. You know where she, what she's gone through. So that gives the levity of this character so much more power and interest. I find it much more interesting. It was intimidating actually to do 1999. I think, you know, all of us think about how we look, you can't help it. It comes, it comes with the territory, but having to play a younger version of yourself, it's intimidating, it's scary. And the wig helps. And thank goodness they, you know, they did something creative with the lighting. They did, they use these lenses that add this different tone. So there's an, you know, you feel that there's a transition of time. But um mostly I, you know, I I would have to think about my body because you do walk different as you age you do you walk different you carry yourself different so I was always trying to think to lighten my voice a little bit and to try to carry myself and go okay carry yourself like a young person I mean how do you do that you, you know because I'm not I'm not young um so those were the little things that I was thinking about and mostly for me 1999 were just flashes it wasn't a, you know my the juicier scenes were in present day. And I, and like I said, I found those so, so much more interesting. Anyway, I love, I love that. And I mean, similarly, Kyler as well, as you were developing Kat as a character and going through the scripts and, and seeing so many rich elements of her backstory and everything that she'd gone through at such a pivotal point in her life, how did that change the spaces that you needed to fill in for yourself as you were developing her as a character compared to how you usually would because you had so many details already given to you through the scripts. Yeah, I um it really was like day day one, scene one it was actually with Al. Um and I I kind of had to take a really big deep breath before like the very first take and just go like okay. So it's like letting Kyler out. Who's cat? And then <laughs> just walking straight into the scene, it was kind of like, just, I don't know, letting myself find it in the moment um, because I was a different version of Kat as well. I was Kat, you know, who's, who's just coming out of her, like these big moments in her life where she gets fired, where she, you know, is now in these, you know, scenarios that are so heartbreaking with her soon to be ex-husband and her daughter is like going through uh, what teenagers would go through when your parents are splitting and things are tough and whatnot. So um, it was, uh, it was interesting because then getting back to, you know, she's this woman who's, who's worked so hard to become who she is. And, you know, when she ends up going back to the farm and seeing, um, you know, her mother again, for the first time, there were, there were moments that I tried to pick out where it's almost like cat reverted back to that teenage side and almost had to prove to her mom, you know, little bits here and there, like how well she's done as her, you know, herself being in her, her own mom. But like, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was fun kind of weaving in and obviously playing with Andy is just absolutely incredible. And we had to find a relationship kind of like all over again. And so it, it was fun to be able to do that and just kind of ride this wave all along the way. It's my first time playing a mom too, like this. So, um, and that, that was, you know, obviously with Sadie, that was just so much fun because I have a teenage daughter. So some of the things that I say, like when I tell her to sit, 
how many times have I said it like that in my house? <laughs> it's just like that one came naturally. So <laughs> I love that. And and Sadie in playing Alice, what I love is that when we first meet her, she's very closed off for one way. And then there's a different direction that her life goes. And so she ends up closed off from people around her in very different trajectories. At the beginning, it's a very reactionary space because she's really responding to the breakup of her parents' marriage. And then, you know, once she discovers the pond and starts traveling back through time, it's, it's this secrecy instead. And then, you know, finding it really difficult to connect to her peers because she's in the middle of this blooming relationship in the past that she knows she can't carry through to the present. Um, and I think you play those different trajectories so beautifully. And so I was really interested in how you found the different ways of, of what isolation and disconnect looks like for a character, because it's not always the same response and emotional trajectory trajectory for her. Yeah, I think that when you bring up secrecy, that's a huge part of of what Alice has to deal with as a character. She's she's always what she learns in the past always brings her closer to Dell, closer to Kat, and also creates like a friendship between her and Elliot. Um, but it also means that she can't really be her full self around anyone because she's hiding everything from her mom she's hiding everything from Dell she's and then when she's in the past she tries to be honest but she can never really say where she's been or who she actually is and and even when she tries she isn't believed Mm -hmm. so I think that gets in the way of her putting down roots like you said and the the challenge being how can she be open while still like having all these secrets with the people that she's closest with and and I think it was really beautiful to, to, to watch her grow and also watch her decide um, like when she really needs to tell someone what's going on. Like, I, you know, we get later in the season and, and she starts actually going to her mom in the way that she goes to Teen Cat. Um, and you see that, that relationship blooming. And then in the episode last night, she finally kind of, in a weird convoluted way because she can't exactly say she's been time traveling but she kind of opens up to Dell and says like I I haven't really found my place here and I'm I'm really like stuck in everything that that happened in the past and and I think she starts opening up as she goes along but but the secrets are are really hard absolutely and and Evan in terms of playing Elliot as well it's when we first meet him and we look at who he was at the beginning of the series he was in such a place of of stasis in his life and really just frozen in time from having learned aspects of his future when he was a teenager and what's beautiful is that when we watch the relationships that he has with each three of the Landry women it's a very different side of himself that unfurls in front of each of these relationships and friendships and so as he begins to really open himself up and find a way to to move out of the past and into the present and into the future for himself that looks very different in each three of those strands of his life and so I wanted to ask you a little bit about how you approach these three different relationships the different sides that you wanted to kind of find in him as a character and then as you developed and grew him throughout the series how that looked slightly different for each of them as well well it's a really fun game to be caring about three members of the same family in different ways because we get to see different facets of Elliot like you said and I think the writers really had a lot of fun uh, with uh, the specificity of those types of relationships. I mean, uh, with Alice, Elliot definitely has the uh, the teacher or is, is attempting to wear the mantle of the, of the teacher guru, even though it might fit a little uh, awkwardly. And uh, uh, with Dell, uh, we don't know too much about Elliot's family life at this point, but we know that for whatever reason, uh, Elliot is, uh, feels safe in the nucleus of this family and can't live without it. And uh, there's something mystical going on. There's something magical going on that is keeping him in the orbit of this family. And so I think that at the same time as Elliot is trying to show up, he also is, needs something. Like he he says to he says to Kat that uh, that he's always needed her. And I think that like as the third part of the trifecta, the ability to or the opportunity to be investigating this love relationship, which is 20 years old, uh, is a is so much fun because. For the young cast, they get to play it uh, so fresh and so present. And then for us, we get to play the time past. And there's so there's a, a litany of things that could have come in between. And it's all about what could have what could have been and what still can be. And uh, uh, Kyler and I had a, a lot of fun digging into that stuff. And 
I, I, I had a, a, just a blast acting with all three of these actors. They're all just brilliant in their own light and bring something different to each of the, each of the scenes. So for me, it was a, it was sort of just like put in, put it on a different hat and uh, just getting to play. And that's one of my most favorite parts of this role is how much uh, Elliot gets to, gets to play between the, the kind of the drama and the comedy. Like, a, like a, he's, he's, he's the guy who doesn't get it a lot. And it's fun. To, it's fun to act that. It's fun to to play a, a fall, to, to to lose, and to try to, and to hopefully gain the the support of the audience along the way. Absolutely. And and Andy, coming back to something that you were saying before about the the body language and how there is such different physical elements to those two performances for you. I was interested in just the emotional landscape of mannerisms and physicality for Dell as well, because even if you just think about someone who's been going through 20 years of really holding on to this grief and this trauma and this sense of loss, you know, that that causes a lot of the body language to be much more physically closed. And then when we see 1999, it's much more loose and kind of open arms, open shoulders. And so how how did the emotional trajectory of those two different spaces inform a lot of the physicality that you ended up finding in them each? Um, well, you know, I, I didn't want to be um, like your, I, I didn't want to be just a grandmother, you know, I wanted her to have a uh, character and to be gutsy and, um, and, and a little offbeat. I wanted her to be, unique. And I think because of everything that's happened to her, and I, I understand this because I am, I'm going to be 65 in April and I've lived a life. I know what life is. It's not easy. And so I can, I, you know, I, I can, I know what I've had to carry. And so I used everything that I understood about the difficulty of life. And I gave it to, to Dale. I, and, um, and it's just like, you know, in the cadence of how she speaks or how she talks to people or um, I wanted there to be an essence of, of hardness to her love, full love, but loss and pain. I wanted there to be pain in her body. And um, that was my intention. So I just, you know, I kind of held on to that, even though, you know, I, 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 and, and the other one thing that Evan was saying, which is so true, is each one of us is so different. We all have our own technique and sensibility of finding our character. And that makes us unique human beings to bring to, every, to each one of these characters. Each one of us held our own ground about who we wanted to be. And, and that's like life. That's who people are. People are individuals and we have to learn to get along with each other and we carry our stuff. So I don't know. I don't know if I answered your question, but that's that's kind of how I went about it. And and, you you, you know, you come in contact with someone who's doing the same thing. And each one of these actors, they do that. So, um, yeah, it, it, it was it was it was a, it was a fun, fun way to play with people and to really and to really stick to your guns about how you wanted to, this this person to be. And it made things so much more interesting. Absolutely. And, you know, kind of off, off the back of that point as well, of how everybody comes to a role and, and has a different process, Sadie and Kyler, I wanted to ask you both about even just logistically how you processed kind of tracking your characters, because it's not even just a case of whenever you're filming in TV and you're filming scenes out of order and there's the challenges that naturally come with making sure that you're tracking emotionally where they're at. You're then also tracking, okay, have they been back in time? What have they just seen and witnessed? How is that going to influence them in the present as well? Well, and so you, there's this real duality and this added layer of everything that the two of you were asked to do in terms of stepping into each scene and knowing exactly where your characters were. So I was interested for both of you in, in how you approach that and how you tracked that. I just would always praise our script supervisor. <laughs> you know, and, and honestly, and our producers too, because as you said, you know, we're, we're filming, we, we did everything in two episode blocks. So I, that was the first time for me, you know, anytime that I've been on television before, it was one episode and then maybe you have like two days of a crossover to the next episode. This was two episodes worth all interwoven. And so, you know, I maybe with Sadie, you know, even in the beginning too, when she first started going into the pond, it might've been, she had a little bit more time with the challenge of that, I think. Mm -hmm. um, 
But essentially, as I'm an older cat and I'm in the past, I'm just lurking. I'm just creeping around in the background. You just see me yep, behind the popcorn machine. You see me behind a haystack. You see me in the back of a truck. Yes. <laughs> it's like, so I just had to come up with different variations of how I was being a creep, essentially. Uh, and, and then just asking again, yeah, the help of the producers and whatnot to keep things on, on track, on par, because we were filming so much, especially Sadie, especially Sadie. I mean, you know, this girl coming in, and uh, she just undertook such a, a massive role, but also from a schedule standpoint, like she was just like in it, in it, in it, in it. And she carried that. I felt so beautifully. I know that you both would agree with me too, but she really did. So kudos to, to Sadie and all of this. I think she's a beautiful, bright, shining star. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I also have been thinking a lot about how the, the parallel between Alice going to Elliot about all the time travel questions and consistencies or all those different details. I feel like I would also go to Evan a lot and be like, okay, wait, what, what is happening? Like, why, why am I, <laughs> why, why is this happening right now? Or, or did I already go here? Or did I already learn this? Or am I learning this for the first time now? Because it's part of Elliot's journey too um to to hold on to all those details and so it it was a part of I, I feel like it was a part of my process to make sure that we were on the same page and that we had tracked those details in the same sequence or at the very least in in the versions that Alice and Elliot understand them to be um and because Alice is um you know she really has Elliot as her confidant for all of this for the until episode six, where she finds out her mom is also going back and forth. And he's the only person that that she can go to. So my understanding of the two timelines is really in relationship to Elliot's story too. Um, and, and so I think that was a huge part of it. Uh, there, it was very much a team effort to hold on to all the, all the storylines and, and touching base with the different, the adult and the teen versions of, of um, characters was a huge part of that. Yeah, no, it's, it's incredibly impressive to look at what you've had to do for that. And, and, and coming back to you, Evan, you know, I, I love the, the there's this portrayal of Elliot and it really allows for his softness and his vulnerability and his romanticism, you know, with him and Kat, he's the one that's like, I don't want to kiss until it's the perfect moment. You know, for him, it, it really needs to be something special because he's waited so many years for it. And was, was that kind of softness and vulnerability that you've really tapped into him as a character, something that you found very early on on the page with him when you were working with the scripts? Well, the, the, one of the most interesting things for me was to think about the dead space between the 16 year old Elliot and the adult Elliot. And uh, especially since David Webster who plays young Elliot brilliantly and very uh, brightly and openly and, and almost naively, um, I, I saw a delicious opportunity to uh, introduce some of the kind of craggles that t time you know, time, like it's like a tree that's lived uh, and just gets gnarled by the elements. And, and so we see that Elliot's sense of humor is just a little bit, uh, a little bit cooler. And his, uh, it, it, what are the, what happens to a man or a person when they have been separated from the life that he sees everybody else participating in. And uh, so I, I just dove into that poetic metaphor and I loved it. And I, I loved uh, even, even down to just the fact that the guy wears glasses. Um, it's a, it's a shield. It's a, uh, something that is in between him and everyone else. And so playing with that, the, the, uh, uh, the push and pull between wanting to be a sovereign individual who can self-destinate, but then also wanting to pay respect and homage to the person he knows he has always been, which is someone who is in love with this woman. So uh, yeah, I forget your original point, but I can just talk and talk. <laughs> I love it. And, and, and lastly, Andy and Kyler, you know, 
the the relationship between these two women is mother and daughter. What's beautiful in the trajectory throughout the series is it's never a linear path. It's not, these are two women that are really distant to each other. And then each episode, they get closer and closer. Sometimes it's two steps forward, one step back with the two of them, depending on what they're going through. And so I just wanted to ask the two of you a little bit about developing and, and building that, because even in the first couple of episodes, there's all these really nuanced moments in both of your performances. Like if we look at how Dell never sh- expresses her grief in front of Kat, it'll be the moment that she turns away and both of you kind of created these really minute nuanced responses in quiet moments and then gradually started to kind of bring them into the fold with one another and so I was just interested in how the two of you really worked to shape it in a way that it feels so real and vulnerable and and not linear in the most beautiful way you go Kyla okay (laughs) um well it was interesting because with with our relationship um you know, where Kat is now, the last she sees her mother is when she's, you know, a teenager. And then all this time and all this life and all of this just goes in between. Um, And I know that very personally in my own life um, about that, you know, sometimes I thought about, you know, if I was around, because I haven't seen my family in 15 plus years. So I know this heartache. I know this kind of like, um, that, that feeling of all of a sudden, you know, what would I be all of a sudden? Like, that's why that first moment when she sees Del coming out of the house, it's, it's kind of like that almost kind of takes your breath away. Not only that, but it's, you know, it's Annie McDowell standing in the doorway, just being Annie McDowell, <laughs> gorgeous and magical preacher. And then it's just like, she gets, you know, just breezed right by because Dell's, you know, her heart is going straight for her granddaughter. And so, um, yeah, finding those little moments, it was almost kind of like I was able to tap back into teenage cat um, and have just these little twinkles or, I mean, just short of doing an eye roll, you know, herself. It's kind of like there is a bit of that, you know, reverting back uh, back in time, but they do have to find each other all over again. You know, like I'd mentioned, it's it's Kat coming back as a, an adult woman who's a mother and who's, you know, married and she's been with this man for, you know, 20 years, basically. And and now that's falling apart. And so, um, yeah, those little moments, I, you know, Andy and I had a lot of fun with that stuff. And uh, gosh, so much laughter, <laughs> so much laughter, just just finding it because it was like brand new with all this history. It was still brand new. And what I would say to add on to to that is um, I think all of us realized that we had a great piece of material. I think we all read that script and got hired and thought to ourselves, I want to be good. I really want to be good. Um, I I care about this. I'm going to fight to, to do a good job. And so we put our heart and soul into it. And um, it wasn't always comfortable because if you care, it's it's not nonchalant. You're not just doing anything. You're making an effort to do what you believe is right. And then you come up next to someone who's fighting hard to believe in what they're doing is right. And that actually creates a lot of beautiful tension that can create those moments that you're talking about of real being feeling vulnerable or uh, powerful or disempowered or everything that you feel when you have these deep, meaningful relationships that have been challenged by some very painful, difficult situations that are real and horrible. So I think that has a lot to do with it is that we had these, these writers that are so gifted and talented to to give to give us this material that shocked us all nonstop. I mean, with each episode that we would read, we couldn't believe that they were coming up with these concepts and ideas and they were giving us this material. So I feel like we were all fighting really to do the best work we could possibly do. And um, and and appreciative. I think all of us are really appreciative to be a part of a project that means something to us because we know how value we see the value in it. So I think there was, you know, a lot of times we don't get 
uh, you know, you want more than two takes or three takes, but you don't have time. That's the other element. I'm always explaining to my friends that work on <laughs> fancy movies, <laughs> that the time constraints, but it doesn't mean that we aren't giving our hearts and souls constantly. We are. And um, everybody worked really, really hard and cared about what they were doing. So that's what I would add. <laughs> and I, I think kind of, if you don't mind, um, another thing that we were also incredibly, you know, lucky about was that each of these actors, every single actor was so incredibly gracious because adding to what you were saying, Andy, it's like, because everybody cared, it's like, if it was my coverage, you know, Sadie, Evan, or, or Andy would give just as much um, off camera as they would on camera. And, and that in and of itself in this industry, in this business, even when you have time constraints, like you're saying, you don't, you don't always get that. Sometimes you are just working across somebody who's either, either phoning it in or just, you know, that we've got to get through it very quickly, but each and every actor on this show did that just because we cared and reciprocated that as well. So it was, that was incredibly special because you feel like even if you don't have all the time in the world, everything that you're getting all the way around, cast, crew, especially, like you're getting everybody's best. And I think that's what translated so beautifully on the screen and why people have really been able to capture it because it's like, it's all heart and it's all soul. And it's it's just real genuine emotion. It just happens to be where we're saying lines that we were given, but yeah, everybody was all in for sure. It's a bit of a rare bit of a rarefied thing too because i think the the crew even down to the crew people sniffed uh an opportunity that hadn't been done before people knew that this was an opportunity to break the mold and definitely defy expectations and as soon as you're starting to do that the the regular risk reward profile of a business like the entertainment business it starts to not be as important and so things like well are we gonna go for the lunch break now or in five minutes become begins, becomes a little bit less important and it seemed like everyone top to bottom without even having to be asked they just showed up and brought a little bit extra of themselves and that's the little bit of magic that i think audiences see and they can see a quality of care in it which makes them feel safe to to commit and to suspend their disbelief and come with us on the story I love all of those details and you've all crafted such beautiful performances in the series. So congratulations on a great show. And thank you so much to all of you for talking about this. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you.